What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy, Squiddy, back in another Squiddy Hills. Today, I want to talk to you guys about a very, very cool deck, and it's actually pure Dogmatica. So this was a deck that I built based off of an OCG deck recipe that I believe got top four in a sizable OCG tournament. I think it was around 80-ish people, if I'm not mistaken. But how the deck works is it relies on your heavy Dogmatica cards. So we actually have a couple of new Dogmatica cards in the past couple of sets that a lot of people have overlooked, including the card Dogmatica Matrix, which this deck kind of revolves around. This is a continuous spell that says when this card is activated, you can add one Dogmatica Ritual Monster or one Dogmatica Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand. Then if your opponent controls a monster, you can add one Dogmatica card from your deck to your hand. And it doesn't stop there. It actually has a ignition effect where it says once per turn if you control a dogmatic ritual monster you can look at either player's extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard so this card is actually very very powerful obviously going second but we build this deck as a control deck that can go first or second see the amount of non-engine that we're playing here we're playing three six nine twelve 15 hand traps in the main deck which i think is a solid number this format i think it's very good against a lot of the combo heavy decks and decently good against Kashira because we can catch some off guard with Nibiru. We can just whittle away the resources. So how this deck actually pairs really well with Dogmatica Matrix is the existence of Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. And this monster, when it's normal summoned, um, you can actually link it off into our Salomon Great Almirage which allows her to trigger her effect to bring herself back to her opponent's side of the field in defense mode. So you guys already know this effect, but how it applies in this deck specifically is it does a lot of things. Number one, it locks your opponent. Number two, it puts a monster onto your opponent's side of the field on turn one, so we can take advantage of the Dogmatica Matrix and get the instant plus two, because typically this card would only be good going second, but having the ability to give our opponent a monster on turn one is crucial because it allows us to unlock the hidden potential of this card and add a secondary Dogmatica card from our deck to our hand. And on top of all of that, it puts an Almirage onto the table so we can bring out Dogmatica Ecclesia for free with her effect because she requires a special summon monster from the extra deck on the field. So it does like a lot of things. Basically, Dogmatica Ecclesia plus Nightmare Corruptor Ibli going first is full, full combo. And it's really, really cool that Ibli going second is not dead because you can still go into Linger Rebo and then special summon it to their table. So it stops a lot of things like Chimera Fusion, kind of like baits it out, stops things like Nibiru, and then it stops all the traps, so like Infinite Impermanence and whatever. Just Having Linger Evil is really, really nice interaction there. The OCG player also played Signet Mining in their deck just to search for Nightmare Corrupt through Ibli. I'm not sure how good that card is, especially in a metagame where people are playing Ashes and Drolls, but I think it could potentially be an option or like something like Small World even just to get access to Nightmare Corrupt through Ibli because it's such a crucial card, especially going first. Now, other cards. We're maxing out on Dogmatica Ecclesia. She searches everything, including Dogmatica Matrix and vice versa, which Dogmatica Matrix can search Ecclesia as well. So it's really, really nice that she can special summon herself out. And then Dogmatica Flirtily is just for her non-targeting effect negation, as well as boosting all of her Dogmaticas by 500 when she attacks. It's really, really nice with Alba Zoa, which has 4K attack. So with Dogmatica Ecclesia, Flirtilies, and Zoa, that is well over 8K attack. What Albazoa does is it's crazy. This is a newer ritual that says, as it's on the field, Dogmatica monsters you control are unaffected by the activated effects of your opponent's fusion, synchro, XYZ, and link monsters. So it's effectively a chaos angel for all of your Dogmatica monsters. But the more important effect is the actual ignition effect that says during your main phase, you can make your opponent choose and apply one of these effects. So what that means is your opponent can choose either A, for every two cards in their extra deck, they send one card from their hand or extra deck to the graveyard. So if they're starting off the duel, they have 15 cards. That means seven because 14, right? Two divided by uh, seven, two times seven is 14. So they have to effectively send seven cards from their extra deck and or hand to the graveyard. So it's like rips half of their extra deck. It's not the greatest against certain decks like Branded or like Chimera or Kashtira because Kashtira can play cards like Garura and draw cards or Skull Knight or Skull Warrior, all those cards. But it also has another effect that your opponent can choose to return all fusion, synchro, XYZ, and link monsters they control the extra deck. So it does one or the other. They get to choose which one. But if you want them to use a certain one, for example, on turn one, they're not able to choose returning fusion, etc., because they don't control any of them. So they have to send from their extra deck. It just devastates the extra deck. It's really, really nice there. 
Decided also to play a copy of White Knight of Dogmatica. The OCG player was only playing the Abazoa, but I figured because Abazoa is not very good against Kashtira, I think White Knight of Dogmatica is a little better. And for this one, it's a level eight, so you can send cards like Titanic Cloud, the Ash Dragon, and it's really nice that it says when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can look at their extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard, so you get a Diablosis effect. And you can also send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. So it's really, really nice that you get plus one and then you get to rip one of theirs. And uh, it's just another option, I think, if you know your opponent's playing Clash Tira, it kind of gives you that option. We have one copy of Dogmatica Maximus. In addition to Abuzoa, if we can get out Maximus, we can rip an additional two cards from their extra deck. So we're ripping a total of potentially nine cards, which is super just devastating against combo decks. It could be game against a lot of decks. Even against like decks like Branded and Chimera, we can just rip out the cards that we care about. Even though they get the searches in the end phase, it doesn't matter. We're hitting like the main cards that they require. And then one copy of Blazing Cartesia. This card does come up because you can summon it off of Despian Lulu Wallet in the end phase. And a lot of times when we already have Ecclesia in rotation, it makes no sense to summon another copy. So we would just rather go for Blazing Cartesia. Then from there, we can sink a fusion off in our opponent's main phase in Grand Guino. Grand Guino can dump one of our monsters, including Golden Cloud Beast Malong, which is a quick effect to bounce any face up card our opponent controls. So effectively becomes disruption. Just really, really nice interaction there. And then the three Iblis for obvious reasons. And then a bunch of hand traps, which I think are the best ones for the format right now. We could argue playing Droll as well if you have a heavy combo deck, a metagame around you. And then Nadir's Servant is an amazing card because it searches basically all of our engines. It searches the Dogmatica Ecclesia into the Dogmatica Matrix. It dumps something like a Garura to draw a card. It dumps anything to start our engines like Despian Lulu Wallace. It dumps Titanoclad so we can search in the end phase to get Fleur de Lis to our hand. Just really, really nice interactions there. We're also playing two copies of the Ritual Spell, so one of each. Dogmatica Calamity. This is basically a Necroz Kaleidoscope. It allows you to Ritual Summon a Dogmatica monster by tributing monsters from your hand or field, or sending one monster from your extra deck whose level equals that level. So in the case of Albazoa, we just send Lulu Alice, which is level 12, and phase we get the effect to search out potentially either Cartesia or Ecclesia. And for the case of White Knight of Dogmatica, we can send something like a Titanic Cloud, which is a level eight, or potentially Grand Guino if we want to use Grand Guino's effect on our opponent's turn to summon out a Lulu Wallace by banishing it. So really, really nice interaction there. Then the other card is Dogmatica Macrobur. So this can summon any Dogmatica Ritual from your hand or graveyard. It's effectively a Necroz Psycho because you can recur monsters from graveyard. So it's really, really nice follow-up card. And then you tribute monsters from your hand or banish fusion or synchro monsters from your graveyard whose total levels equal or exceed that level. So it's really nice we can go Calamity into Zoa on turn one, and then on the follow-up, we have Dogmatic Macabre to bring it back by banishing the Lulu Wallace that we sent on the previous turn. So just really, really nice interaction there. The other thing to note is that this card actually does mention White Knight of Dogmatica and White Relic of Dogmatica, so we can potentially also play Pre-Preparation of Rites if we wanted to search it, but I couldn't fit it in the deck. I felt like there were a lot of hand traps that we had to play before we played a huge engine like this, but this is potentially something that you could also experiment with, and it's really, really nice plus one for that interaction. Pot of Prosperity is a card I decided to play in this deck so we can dig for certain cards like Dogmatic Matrix, Nadir Servant, so on and so forth. It does clash a little bit with Garuda, unfortunately, so just bear that in mind, you won't be able to draw. Another card you could also play is Extravagance, which is nice because it just gives you two cards, period. I didn't like how potentially Extravagance could sometimes banish a lot of our cards that we had to play three copies. For example, Almirage banishing all copies means that our Ibli is just either stuck in our hand or we have to go into Lingaribo and they can just crash it. So I kind of had struggles with that. Also banishing potentially cards like Lulu Wallet and having to play like three of everything kind of limited our extra deck space. So I figured Prosperity is a little better. Plus you on top of everything get to dig for powerful cards like Nightmare Corruptor Ibli that you actually do want as a part of your combo. So that's why I chose to play this card, but you guys can definitely experiment with other consistency cards as well. Two copies of Dogmatica Punishment. This is one of the main cards that we also want to search off of Ecclesia potentially. I feel like it's just really, really good in a mid-game meta state. You could potentially argue playing one as well, just to have that searchable option, because it is kind of bad to draw going second, as a trap always is. Side deck's fairly standard. We can play a lot of hand traps like Droll. We can play Retaliating Sea, which is good against Purely, good against Branded, good against Chimera, good against Runix. And then a Kurikara just for things like a Rise Heart, which can kind of gives us, give us a little bit of trouble when our hand traps don't get there because it shuts off things like Nadir's Servant. And then uh, Extra Deck's fairly standard. We have Entis for the Pops. We have Bucephalus as well to potentially send to target a big monster like Zeus off of Dogmatic Punishment, then send an Entis, I mean a uh, Garura to draw. 
We have two copies of Grand Guino, just having that Malong interaction or just having the potential follow up with Cartesia. We have two copies of Titanic Lad, which is one of the best monsters to send because you can special summon Ecclesia, you can add Ecclesia, you can add Fleur de Lis, a bunch of stuff to start your engines. We have Lulu Willith, which is very, very powerful as well. We have Malong to send. Herald of the Arclight is another one that you can send off of the Nadir Servant because it's really, really nice potentially giving us that uh, option to add the White Knight of Dogmatica, and then that will trigger, allowing us to add a copy of Dogmatica Calamity. So really, really nice interaction there. We have Lingaribo and Salamangrate, and then for the Iblis, and then Sky Striker Azalea, just on the off chance that we do have like two lights or whatever, we want to pop something. So very, very standard deck. Um, I'll show you guys a replay now to kind of demonstrate what this deck actually does. It's a lot of fun as a control deck. I would definitely recommend you guys try this out. And it's fairly cheap too, save for things like the Pot of Prosperity. All right, guys. So to demonstrate a little bit about how this deck actually works, we actually lost the Dyro here. We're playing against a very combo heavy deck, aka Manadium. So yeah, they open pretty standard. Actually, they open very nice. They have the Manadium plus a Visa Starfrost. Ash Blossom Arrival, Imperm. The only caveat is, unfortunately, they are very susceptible to a hand trap. So our hand, we have Nightmare Corruptor, Ghost Mourner, Ash Blossom, two hand traps here with Dogmatic Ecclesia and also Abaloa. So we have like some plays here. Double hand trap is always nice. Obviously, we're going to Ash there because of the fact that they kind of started off awkward, you know, like normal summoning the Meek and then going Star Frost. So we can kind of assume that that's their only play. So we're gonna go ahead and Ash that, but they can still extend here with Lightheart. We're gonna go ahead and Mourner that just so they don't get these Care Claw into rotation. They are going to set an infinite impermanence and pass, and we're actually in a pretty good spot here. Just gonna go ahead and normal summon the Nightmare Corruptor Ibly here and just go into the Cyber's Lingaribo just to protect against traps, which happen to be an Imperm. So that was a very nice little interaction there. We're gonna actually summon back the Nightmare Corruptor there just to play around Nib, I guess, but uh, in hindsight, it wasn't absolutely necessary, but I think it's still good measure anyways, because it's not like we're going to game this turn anyways. Uh, however, if this actually resolved, then we would have had a chance to game just by going into Alba Zoan to the table with 4k and then 1500 and then getting the Fleur de Lis, which boosts all of our Dogmaticas by 500. That actually would have been game, I'm pretty sure. So 45 plus 3k, 75 plus, yeah, that's just 9500. So get a little greedy here, searching Dogmatic Matrix, but in hindsight, it probably should have just searched the actual ritual spell because our opponent might have just had Ash and they didn't really know what was going on with the Ecclesia. They didn't think it was valuable to Ash that, so we could have just searched ritual spell. But instead, Matrix, because it would add two cards, they would obviously Ash here, so it's kind of a misplay. Also potentially getting punished by Cosmic Cyclone, even though that's not a popular main deck card, but it's just probably better to search the ritual spell that can't really get stopped by something, whereas Dogmatic Matrix still has the opportunity to get stopped. So unfortunately, we do kind of uh, get very unlucky here by doing that. Opponent's going to draw reframing, unfortunate. They're going to go crash into Linkaribo just so that they can continue playing. We left that on the board previously, although there was an argument to probably just kill it by battle because they do play cross shape, so they could normal summon something and linked off. But that's all right. They're going to go ahead and Scareclaw Arrival back the Visa Starfrost, bring back the Lightheart, which has the effect to bring itself back when they control Visa Starfrost. They are going to go to a second copy of the Lightheart, so very, very nice here being able to add another copy of the Field Spell. We're going to Valor that. And then from here, they're going to admit defeat because they didn't have any follow-up, even though we didn't really have anything in our hand, to be honest, depending on what we drew next turn. But they probably decided that they were seen enough. So now we're going second. They open reframing again, Arrival. A hero lives, Reamhart and Reichart. A hero lives is a very, very powerful card that allows you to get almost full combo. Our hand is pretty weak. Even though we sided in a bunch of hand traps, we only see one measly effect veiler. So yeah, they're going to go ahead and a hero lives here, sending for cost with E-Hero Prisma. Beats a Star Frost, and then they're gonna go into Lightheart. We're gonna actually Valor there. I think against this deck, it's a lot of times better to Valor the first chance that you get because it's really easy for them to get Baron on the table. Like if they had Visa Star Frost or they searched it off of the Lightheart and we had Valor, they could just go Visa Star Frost, pop something, and then summon out the right card and then make Baron, and our Valor is just like dead. So when it's the only hand trap, I definitely like to just Valor the first thing and hope that they brick. But unfortunately, in this case, they had the extender, so it did nothing. So from here, they're just going into full combo here, going to the Baron. Now they're protected, adding Abstition. Abstition activates to pop the Lightheart, and then they're going to be able to add a copy of Meek. And then, yeah, this is just full combo game. So unfortunately, they are going to be able to go into the Emery Terra, go into the Pearl Rhino is another way to search another copy of Visa Star Frost. 
And yeah, they put up a really nice board. I'll show you guys how to play it out. They actually ripped two cards. So they're gonna go ahead and rip the Fleur de Lis here. And then gonna bring back the Cross Sheep. Gonna go over the first Visa's Astroloud, having a second and third potential copy available because they do have multiple Visa's Starfrost in the graveyard. Gonna go to Dissipator and then rip another card by summoning back the Omega, go into the second, and then just go into uh, Overlay into number 30. Eight with the reframing, so yeah, there is no way that we're winning this one. Just gonna scoop really quick. Next game. So here's where the deck kind of really shines and show you guys the combo that we were previously talking about. So we're open Pot of Prosperity. Unfortunately, this hand does kind of play hard into Droll, but luckily our opponent only had the Imperm and they did not have Droll. So we're gonna go ahead and pot for a whopping six cards. Hopefully we don't get punished by Droll because we are going to reveal a copy of Nightmare Corruptor Ibli here and take that. Go ahead and take that, just so we can start our combos. Again, Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. It locks them, but it also gives them a body so we can get Dogmatica Matrix. And it also gives us a free extra deck monster so we can summon out the Ecclesia for free. So we're gonna normal summon, no Drone Lockbird, luckily. Almirage, zero attack, you don't want them to crash. The Ibli with the Lingery Bow, obviously. So gonna go ahead and summon out the Dogmatica Virtuous. Use the effect to add a copy of Dogmatica Matrix, because it's a Dogmatica card. Very, very nice interaction here. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that. And because our opponent controls the Ibli, we can add Alba, Zoa, and then we can add another Dogmatica card. So we're gonna add Dogmatica Calamity. Our hand is really nice. And they unfortunately cannot imperm because they do control the Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, so it's very, very nice interaction there. They can't evenly match as well. Activate the Calamity, send the Lulu Whaleth to bring out the Abuzoa. They're going to have to send seven cards here from their hand and or extra deck, which is very devastating for a combo deck like this that relies heavily on their extra deck. Going to go ahead and rip, wow, so many prevalent cards. <laughs> And then they're also going to discard a Hero Lives. I guess they couldn't activate it because they control face-up monsters, so it's a nice little interaction there. And we follow up with the Nadir Servant. So they're going to scoop here instantly, even though we can't draw, but I decided to send the Garuda for good measure because we're under Pot of Prosperity. And then what would happen if our opponent didn't scoop is we're going to summon out the Dogmatica Maximus, use the effect, and then both players send two. So that further rips their extra deck. And we have a lot of cards to send. We could have sent Titanic Clad, as well as potentially a, I don't know, a copy of Herald to search the second ritual spell for follow-up once Albazoa leaves the field potentially on the next turn. So Dogmatica Macrobeer, that one can summon from the graveyard. And then we also get to rip two of their cards. We get Titanic Clad to add the Fleur de Lis in the end phase, so we have a negate. Uh, we also have Blazing Cartesia, unfortunately drawn in hand, but Despian Lulu Wallace otherwise would have been able to summon her in the end phase for another disruption by sending Malong with Grand Guino. We had Effect Failure in hand, and on top of all that, we also had Dogmatica Matrix, which still has the ability, once per turn, if you control a Dogmatica Ritual Monster, you can look at either player's extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard. So we could have ripped his extra deck or just sent another card from our extra deck to the graveyard to potentially benefit even further. So yeah, this is like generally the main combo that we want to go Going forward, we really want Ibli in our hand so we can just play as if we were going second with Dogmatica Matrix, but if we don't have Ibli, it's not the end of the world. We can still leverage our cards like Alvazoa. We can still leverage like Maximus using uh, Ecclesia, using Nadir Servant as an engage potentially. So this is just some cool things that you can do with the deck. If you guys have any ideas, definitely let us know in the comments below. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video, and thanks for tuning in to this awesome Dogmatica deck profile.